I was beginning to think it was going to be the tech unicorn of CES 2022, and then I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes, and folks, I don't use this term lightly. In fact, I hate it, but this is a game changer. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Caleb Dennison, and I am, of course, talking about QD Display, or QD OLED. It was something that we knew was going to be discussed at the show, but would we actually see it? I was beginning to think maybe we would not, and then I got in to the private booth, I saw it with my own eyes, and I'm telling you, it is the best looking display technology I've ever seen. Now you understand I'm a big fan of OLED. I've been reviewing OLED TVs for what, seven, eight years now, and it has been my favorite display technology because there's no backlight, right? Perfect inky blacks and uh, very good contrast, very good color, but not without its drawbacks. It's not a perfect display technology. Let me be clear here, QD OLED is also not a perfect display technology, but it is the next level of OLED-based display technology, and it gets rid of some of the issues that we've experienced with today's conventional WRGB OLED. So what is QD display or QD OLED? Basically, it is an all blue OLED panel with a sheet of printed quantum dots on top of it that convert the blue light into red light and green light. That way you get a true RGB display. There is no white subpixel and there is no need for a color filter. And what that means is much more brightness. When you slap a color filter on top of uh, a white light to carve blue, green, or red out of it, you sap it of its energy. You sap it of its luminance. It's not as bright. It's putting out that light, but then you take it away just trying to get the right colors out of it. With a QD display or QD OLED, you don't have that issue. So we're talking about truly bright reds, greens, and blues, and it is a magical looking thing. First of all, white is pure white. It is not the sort of green tinged white that we've seen with WRGB OLEDs. Now that's not something that I complain about a lot because when you're just watching uh, a, a WRGB OLED TV on its own, you're not aware that the whites have a greenish hint to them unless you stack it right up against another TV and then you see that there's bluish whites and then there's greenish whites with OLED, uh, but there's really never a pure white light coming from a TV and QD display does that exceptionally well. It's brighter and it's not going to have some of the issues with burn-in that we've seen in the past. Now let me be clear, it is still possible for there to be image retention or burn-in. That is definitely still a thing that we have to be a little bit concerned about. But because there's no white subpixel, because you're talking about one OLED compound, blue, and the red and the green quantum dots reacting to it, if the blue degrades, then the red and green degrade with it. So it's always going to be a linear decay, or shall I just say a consistent output. Now you could wear it out by displaying the same thing for a really long time, every single day for months on end. I suppose, yes, you could cause burn-in. But there are new mitigation technologies built into QD Display or QD OLED, as it were, that are gonna help mitigate that too. So I really don't think burn-in is gonna need to be a conversation with this new technology. That's super exciting. Also, go off angle and the color saturation does not dissipate. Brightness is gonna be incredible on this TV. It goes up to 1500 nits peak and that is gonna be super meaningful for HDR, but the black levels are even better. It's got better low luminance control, so you're gonna see more shadow detail. Again, because you have independent blue, green, and red pixels, no white pixel getting into the mix at all. I saw it, the depth is incredible, the richness is incredible, the contrast is unlike anything I've seen before. It is truly the next big thing in TV display technology, and you should absolutely be excited. So why was it so hard to find? Well. Sony is going to make the A95K QD OLED TV, so we know they're making that, but they're not here at CES. At least none of their products are. They had to pull out due to pandemic concerns, and I totally respect that. I was hoping to see it. I didn't get to, and I will. I will go and see it in February or March, and you guys will get to be able to see it with me. Samsung Electronics, for its part, does not yet have a QD display or QD OLED TV. 
Ds, which leads me to something that's very important for me to mention here. This is a Samsung display product. That is the display arm of Samsung. It is separate from Samsung Electronics. Samsung Display makes the displays and they sell them to people like Sony or Dell. Alienware has a monitor made with this stuff. Uh, just like LG also sells its panels to Sony, right? So what we're seeing is that Sony has bought this panel from Samsung Display and is making a TV out of it. Samsung Electronics will also do the same, but it does not have a TV here to look at. So what we're talking about here right now is a technology, but it is finished. There is a final production sample. I've seen it in action. It is ready to be bundled into a TV. We know Sony will do it. Samsung is likely to follow very soon after. Uh, I think we'll see Sony's TV as early as late spring this year. So we're not gonna have to wait until the end of the year to get it. We're gonna see it very soon. And I will bring you the Sony version of this display technology as soon as February. So keep it right here at Digital Trends because you are not gonna wanna miss it. Trust me, I don't get excited like this for no reason. This is the real deal. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about QD Display or QD OLED? Are you as excited about it now as I apparently am? Leave me a comment about that down there so we can talk about it. And while you're down there, click like and subscribe. And also here's two other videos that I think you'll like.